Okay, this video is going to show you the basics on how to do some adjustments to your orbit. So what we're going to do, we've got the default windows kind of up right now. We've got the 3D viewer and we've got the 2D viewer. Now I made some adjustments in here, but I'm going to go through and show you the biggest thing that we want to do. The fastest way to do it is to come over to your satellite, the one that you want to adjust. In this scenario, we've only got the one satellite, but it's got the picture of the satellite. And this one is called EPS sat or EPSAT. We're going to right click on it, although if you left click more than one time, it'll sometimes go over to try and change the name. Left click again to get out of trying to change the name. That's one problem that shows up. So we're, we don't want to type over the name, just have it selected where it's blue here. Right click and go to properties and it takes you right to your orbit information. Real quick, the propagator should say J2 perturbation on these scenarios. Uh, try not to switch that out because it might give you different numbers and make things go a little bit differently. It's basically a setting. The big thing that you want, you can ignore everything on the left. What we want is the stuff on the right. Now there are six orbital parameters that you can change. Uh, the four that kind of stay the same are inclination, argument of perigee, ran, and true anomaly. And there'll be other videos that give you a rundown of those. But you can basically go in and change those to different things. So let's see, let's change the ran real quick to 60 degrees. Now you can click OK and that'll make the change and close that window, but that can be a bit of a pain because then you'll have to go back, right click and select properties on your satellite each time. So a nice thing to do is actually, let's try 85, click apply instead. That'll make the change, but leave the window open so that you're able to work with it. Now, another nice thing is to have the window here and then have your 3D viewer or your 2D viewer, maybe both of them, so that when you make a change, you can see what it's actually doing in there. The last thing that I want to mention is this real quick on the apogee altitude and perigee altitude. We prefer using those because they're easier to kind of imagine and they also make it easy to stay within your constraints. In many of our missions, you have a minimum altitude and a maximum altitude. And so doing this representation is usually easiest. Apogee needs to be the one that's farther out and perigee needs to be the one that's closer in. Now, right now with my scenario, I've actually put in settings that are above my limit on the height. It will let you put that in, but that doesn't mean that that's a good solution because we won't score it. One other thing I want to bring up is this. Uh, if you have a perigee that is greater than the apogee, when you click apply, it will give you an error message because perigee has to be the lower one. We can see that there's a red X there, basically saying there's a problem. There's also a glitch that sometimes you can put in correct values for perigee and you'll still get that issue and it won't go away. That's the other thing I wanted to cover in this video. If you run into that, go do the drop down, go away from apogee altitude to like semi major axis, and then go back to apogee altitude. And that should clear the issues so that you can actually put in the values and click apply. Okay, hopefully that was useful.